Today I'm going to be taking a look at my original workbench installation which was installed on my A590 hard disk and RAM expansion that I used to have on my Amiga 500 Plus many years ago. The backup's about 25 years old and I've still got this because I had it on VHS tape which was uh, created using the video backup system which I've previously done some videos on. I'd already restored this installation a couple of months ago while I was at the swag meet but I wasn't too happy with it because I'd already installed workbench onto the A590 and then I restored the backup over the top of that so that sort of resulted in duplicates of icons on the workbench and you know, extra files where they shouldn't be and it wasn't particularly tidy. So what I've done since then is restore all of these backups again because there's actually three on the tape and I've restored each one onto uh, an SD card so that I've got a bootable copy of each backup. Now I'm using SD cards because I've got one of these SCSI to SD adapters which I'm using in the A590 instead of a hard drive and these little micro SD cards just fit in the micro SD slot on the front of this card here. Now if you want to know a bit more about the SCSI to SD adapter card I'd suggest you take a look at Doug's videos and his channel's 10 minute Amiga Retrocast where he goes into great detail about this particular card and the configuration of the software on it. This is actually a smaller version of the card. I think the original card is quite a bit bigger and there's two versions. There's a version 5 and a version 6. The version 6 has I think a fair bit more functionality and it's faster. Uh, this is based on the version 5. Uh, it's not particularly quick but it's certainly faster than floppy disks. But his video is well worth checking out. Uh, I wish I'd actually been able to watch his video before I set this up because I was having issues when I first tried to use this uh, because I didn't realise that you could configure it I don't, don't know why it didn't occur to me uh, it's got a micro USB port on the front here that you can plug in to update the firmware but you can also run a piece of software that lets you reconfigure how this works and the problem I was having is when I was trying to format a partition that I'd defined using the Amiga A590 um, partition in hard disk configuration software. When I went to format that partition it was failing the format at the very end of the partition and it turns out this was because in the SCSI to SD adapter you actually have to configure the size of the SD card that you're using and although it was configured to 512 megabytes and that these are 512 megabyte SD cards uh, there is quite often with hard disks and it appears to be the same with SD cards a bit of a, a size difference depending on I think the manufacturer and the, the model of the card and these are all well, the ones I've tried seem to be slightly smaller than 512 megabytes so when it was getting to the end of the disk format it was basically trying to format a bit of the card that didn't exist so the format failed so I've got around that just by reducing this to 500 megabytes on the configuration and now that works fine there's three backups that I've restored and they're labelled here, one, two, three and then there's this fourth card here and they should all be bootable so I'm going to try and boot into them I have already had a bit of a look at them so I've got some idea of what to expect and this fourth card here is a backup of the final backup which is number three uh, which I think is probably the best configured of the backups I've got uh, but what I've also done is create folders which contains the uh, copies of the files for all three of the backups. So when I put that one in I'll have access to every bit of data that's been backed up from the A590 all in one place. So that'll probably be the one I, I end up using. So one thing I have discovered about this SCSI to SD adapter is that it won't boot when there's no SD card in it at all. The, and what I mean is the, the Amiga won't boot even off a floppy disk. Obviously it won't boot... <laughs> the A590 if there's no effectively no hard disk available but I would have expected it would have still allowed me to do the workbench disk so that's an interesting discovery so I shall just switch that off again and remove my workbench disk and put this first SD card in this is the first restoration that I've done I may run a little thingy on the corner of the screen if I remember of that restoration in progress or at least the start of it so we can see all the headers and that that come up on the VBS system so this is the first backup that I'm booting up now 
And I found the problem with this one is it doesn't actually boot into Workbench and because it's not starting up properly there's not access to the normal commands. So what I've found I need to do, if I put in the Workbench disk into the floppy drive I can then get access to the commands from that to see what's on the hard drive. Now, I'm sure there's a DIR command on here somewhere. So perhaps if I do DH0C DIR. So that doesn't seem to even be available on the hard drive for some reason. I don't really know why. Um, so there's some C commands in the C folder, but not the ones that I'm expecting. There is a load workbench command though, so we could we could run that off of the hard drive. If I press the right keys, we could anyway. And then Workbench will start, and this, this prompt will end up being stuck here then. But So, there is some form of an installation on here, but it does seem a bit incomplete. That's actually the floppy drive, so that's the wrong, wrong one I've clicked on there. Uh, we've got a folder with some modules in, allegedly. Uh, I think we need to show um, show all files. So there's some modules that have been ripped and, and stored on this installation. Looks like they've been ripped from games, probably with the action replay. Uh, I've got some HD2 here, game and editor. I've tried running these, they don't seem to do anything. And this repairs folder, I've no idea what that is. Uh, show files again. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on with this installation or this backup. What the the setup was at the time the the um, backup was made. There's some other folders in here, and then what appears to be more copies of some of the uh, the workbench installation. Uh, it's, it's very strange. I don't really know what was going on. A uh, folder called files. So this, again, this looks like ignition. I mean, is that are these mods and samples from some games? Because that would possibly be the ignition table from Pinball Dreams, or was it Pinball Fantasies? I forget which. So I'm really not sure what's going on. I don't know what this Robert file is. Not a clue. It's a bit of a mess. This one. Uh, there's a startup sequence. I did look at one of the startup sequence files and it had some weird things in it and it, it's just making me wonder if with this installation if I'd had some kind of virus um, on the Amiga and I just backed it up and then started again or something. I'm not entirely sure so I think what I'll do is probably come back to this one because as I said I have copied all of these first three onto this one card and this, this um, third installation has got a, a copy of Directory Opus installed so it's going to be easier to look through the files and, and see what's what. So I think I'll leave this first back up until then because it really doesn't seem to be a great deal on here to actually look at. So we'll now boot up this second backup that I've restored. Oh. Would help if I took the workbench disk out. So I'll just try booting that up again without the workbench disk in the uh, floppy drive this time. Might get a little further then. And you can see that's booted straight into workbench from the, the hard drive from the A590, which obviously has an SD card in it at the minute. Got some kind of pencil looking mouse pointer here for some reason. Maybe I was uh, trying to do some drawing back then, which I'm sure would have been a complete disaster just as it would be today. So you can see here, I'll just quickly go back to this main window, I've obviously set this up with the things that I use the most, I've gotten rid of uh, some of the default workbench programs and things or I've, I've rearranged things in a way that suited me back at that point in time. You'll also see there's this park thing on the desktop with the old hard drives you were supposed to park them before you actually powered the machine down and that basically told the hard drive to move the heads into a particular place on the disk platter where it was safe for the drive to spin down and where there wouldn't be any data stored. 
uh, that was something you used to have to do these days hard drives just automatically do it when you power them off they, in fact i think on some drives the heads may even get lifted off the platters now but that was something we had to do obviously with a, an sd card based system we don't even need to worry about that it won't do any harm running it but it's completely pointless so let's have a look what we've got on here so disk utilities no surprise x copy pro on here um, uh, everyone's pretty much seen this if they have an Amiga in all likelihood and for some reason I I remembered that to get out of it you double click the top left and it was the first time I ran this I, I thought well how'd you get out and I, I just went to the top left and double click so it's like that's some kind of muscle memory that's that stayed with me for 25 years a bit strange that um, not really sure what setup pro is um, X copy again not sure about that cyclone was another copy tool that i used to have and this is one i bought and it had a little dongle that you plugged in the back um i don't have that dongle anymore looks like there's some kind of corruption going on here i'm not sure how you get out of that escape so yeah that was something that i bought for copying or making backups of original games should i say we don't we don't do copying Another version of Xcopy. There was numerous different versions. I actually quite like the look of that one. It's a much cleaner, cleaner layout. Um, I'm not sure what fixed disc was. I mean, these things are all familiar, but I'm not entirely sure where what they came with. I think it might be some kind of file checking and recovery thing. Looking at what's here. I do recall the program, I recall seeing it, but yeah, maybe it's uh, file system integrity checking or something. Uh, QB tools, I'm not sure what that is. I'm sure there's people, oh, quarterback tools. Again, the name sounds familiar. But what does it do? Yeah, so this seem, does seem to be some kind of hard disk utility, the defragmentation and that kind of thing. Restore deleted lost files and drawers, so yeah, data recovery of some sort perhaps. Perhaps if you deleted a file you can scan and then undelete that file. Uh, I don't really fully recall that. I do recall some of these icons, because I think some of these icons are icons that I drew or I I took existing icons and altered them a little bit so I'm pretty sure I had something to do with these icons these two disc ones here and we've got a copy of dpaint obviously um, this default thing also looks familiar but I'm not entirely sure what it does I've tried running it but it, it doesn't really seem to show anything other than do that but I'm not I've got a feeling it's set some kind of default folder to save to or set the one of the floppy drives as a default to save to when I was saving files because I didn't use to save the files to the hard drive very often even though I had the hard drive because my A590 only had about 20 meg on it so the space was really limited but I'm not entirely sure um, I'm sure I also had another art program that I used to mess about with but I'm not really sure what that one was called I can't remember maybe that's on one of the um, the other backups that I've restored so yeah D-Paint that's about the limit of my abilities no I don't think we'll save that masterpiece and we've got your preferences so these are probably going to be the usual built-in workbench preferences tools I'm not quite sure what set prefs actually does so you can configure your standard workbench settings there's probably some more of those somewhere music I'm going to assume Octomed oh no oh so we've got we've got some mod files here assume they'll play no song memory 
Uh, maybe they won't play. Uh, for whatever reason, that doesn't appear to want to work. So obviously in here there's a load of mod files and there's a, the Octomed player. So you could play mods in the background whilst working on something. Another thing you'll notice when I'm loading some things up, you're getting like a coloured flickering on the mouse pointer. One of the things I installed to help with disk space, because this disk space was limited on the hard drive, was um, like a decruncher library. And that would actually decompress uh, files, even programs in the background when you loaded them. And that allowed me to store more on the hard drive uh, at the expense of having a small delay with the actual file loading up or the program loading up. Let's go into Octomed. So again, there's this default. Um, sh I'm sure there'll be some way to see what that does, but my workbench knowledge is, well, most of it seems to be gone now, so I'm having to relearn all of this, but it'd be interesting to know what that actually does. Oh, okay, so there's definitely something a bit iffy with this installation. I mean, we've got plenty of memory. We've got two meg chip and two meg fast, so there's no reason it shouldn't work, but, well, let's try that version of the, no, it's, it's not, it's not happy about something, but anyway. Uh, directory Opus is on here as well. This is the, one of the classic file managers for the Amiga. So again, this is a compressed program, so that's like a decompression routine it's running. Uh, yeah, there does seem to be something not right with this installation. There appears to be some files missing, some library files. I don't know why that would be. It doesn't seem to be very happy at all. Uh, Protex is a word processor. I actually used to use this to do some of my school work on, and I think maybe even some of my early college work. Um, I may actually have even bought this program myself. I think this wasn't something that got copied. Um, I can't properly remember where it came from, which is what makes me think I must have bought it, because it wasn't particularly easy to get hold of stuff uh, back then. Uh, some kind of temp folder. Attempt to uh, implode us. So this is again a decompressor or a compressor program with a mod file built in. So you can uh, compress files with this, and it's a bit like a Amiga equivalent of uh, WinZip, that kind of thing. As you can see here, it says ex, ex no. Well, you, you, you can see it, but I can't say it. Executable file compressor. So this is actually what you would use to compress a program, so that the program would then be smaller uh, on the disk, and then it uncompresses itself when it loads. Text said, I think is a, just a basic text editor, so sort of a bit more of an advanced program, a bit like a Notepad thing, but more advanced. Um, Power Packer again is another compressor. I think this is probably the one just for compressing ordinary files that you would use rather than executable files. Um, again this does look very very familiar. I think this is the one I would have used to compress things like font files on the hard drive again to try and reduce the amount of uh, space taken up on the hard drive. And there was also as I said earlier a library uh, that was installed that would then allow those to be decompressed real time so you could just use them as if they were normal font files even though they were compressed. Uh, key map editor I'm guessing, I don't know why I would have needed that but apparently there's one there, probably just something I was interested in. HD Toolbox I think is the standard program that comes with the Amiga A590 for partitioning. Yeah that's yeah pretty standard. Uh, I think the one I've got is a an Epson specific one, whereas this looks like it's a bit more of a, 
a generic version CLI mate some kind of alternate CLI again it's so long ago that I looked at all of this stuff I, I have no idea okay so this is a this would have been one of the very first copying tools I use or file management tools should I say not so much copying it's not for copying discs as such but yeah this is a I don't know if you can yeah you can get back to the workbench so is that not quite sure what that does yeah so I should be able to click here DF0 and then get a file and folder listing up on the side here and see there's all kinds of weird things in here not sure so we click read to go into the folder no that just refreshes so I'm assuming that's oh so we right click to get into it this was one of the problems with a lot of these old Amiga programs is they they all had their own sort of interfaces and their own ways of working so I'm not, again I don't know what this stuff is this definitely looks like something that I've created which is probably not a good thing ah, so you can so this is kind of a a bit like directory opus and a very early type of directory opus file management tool um, so you can just copy files between different devices and folders delete them that kind of thing yeah, it's got a format option here so you can format drives uh, looks like it's only for floppy drives there rename so it's different modes by the looks of it oh, so we've got a an ASCII and a hex viewer here no idea what these things are so it's quite an old program there's no context menu on this if I right click I don't get any kind of menus so, but I do remember using this. I'm pretty sure this was one of the very first file managers that I, I actually used. Again, I've no idea where I got it from. Uh, View 80, I think. Oh, uh, again. So there's definitely something missing on this install. You see there, it said it needs the implode library. So this would be the library that uh, decompresses some of the executables. It's probably also why. Uh, the mod player and other things aren't working properly um, but again my my workbench knowledge is now so far gone and I wouldn't even know where to start to put that right and to be honest it's probably not much point I just wanted to have a a bit of a look around and see what I could find on here so if we do show all files so we can see some of these extra extra things on here so there's a C drive is of the C folder is there. Uh, there's no DIR command. I thought DIR was a separate command, but I don't know. If you wait, the config startup sequence would be things that it runs when it starts up the system. Fonts. That all files is there still and play I think the L is is it L for the libs or what was L I can't remember libs is obviously for libraries so we've got again these these libraries here for decompression so I'm, I'm really not sure why this installation isn't working properly because I know the volume or the, the device name for the hard drive is DH0 which is what it used to be on my original system so um, I don't know why it's not not working <laughs> 